Mark McGrath, Dad? what's going on? How are you, brother? I'm Tanner. You remember talking to me the other day? Yes, I do. You kidding, kidding me? We're going to do this interview a little different than what we normally would do. We're going to do this for the fans. Okay, awesome. Okay. you got to do it for the fans, right? Um, so let's start with a little tour. First of all, what are we in? This is like a little... Uh... This is the glorious backstage of a rock and roll tour. You know, it's so funny. You see people at meet and greets come backstage, and they're like, all right, where's all the, you know, there's the pyro, where's the midgets, where's all the porn? And Where like, are it's they? Just, it, you're in a trailer. This is it. I mean, <laughs> this is what you get, and you're lucky to get something this cool. At least your air conditioning on you know so uh there, you, you got a booze in place so you know got to have a little of this no show without this kids is Careful. this your drink of choice irish whiskey you've got some irish in you as i am well. a little mcgrath yes indeed okay. and uh so just to i'm gonna have a shot or two with this as things have changed since the 90s a little bit so I, i've learned how to pace myself if you will Greg. okay you've so. come a long way since maybe uh early uh 2000 1999 back then yeah uh, some might say you were a bit of a drunkard and some would be correct <laughs> assuming that you know i mean i look we, we never thought we'd make it at all and never mind get a song on the radio sell millions of records so we were gonna we were gonna get every blood out of every moment of fun and we did you know and we didn't leave a backstage empty that we you know and you know we want to be a hospital van if you're serving beers we're gonna drink them so that was kind of the uh, mo back then but you quickly find out and as you get older uh the, the perception changes a little bit you know people are here not hear the songs no one's here for anything else. The hysteria is gone. They're here because these songs mean a lot to them, and we want to deliver them the best we can. And so much has happened over the years, of course. Uh, uh, ladies are disappointed. You're a married man now. Look at this, you guys. A ring. Can you believe it? You know? Uh, you know, it, it's weird. I think I've only ever got married. Nothing changed. I've known her for 19 years. Okay. We had twins. We've been living together for a while. Living in sin, as the kids say. Uh, well, Crazy. you know what? I'm doing the same thing with my girlfriend right here. That's Justine, by the way. Hi, Justine. How are you? <laughs> nice to meet you. Pleasure. <laughs> well, you know, how long have you guys been together? Uh, five years. Oh, all right. Well, God, what are you waiting for, man? She That's what I used to get. You know, she hasn't given me the uh, ultimatum yet. Smart. <laughs> Smart lady. She's still figuring you out. You're like, I'm I figure so. if I like Tanner or not, man. <laughs> I haven't figured that one out yet. Uh, yeah, so, like, it's been great for me. You know, I just kind of wraps up the whole package. I have right. kids getting married. It's my best friend. You know, we've been through all this weird stuff together. We've broken up, we've gotten back together, and there's just a friendship there that can't be denied. Were the breakups on her end or your end? Both. You know, both. And we, I'd be on the road for years, and you know, you know how that, that goes, and the whole rock and roll relationship type thing. And, you know, we, we, we kind of broke the foundation a little bit, but, you know, after all the craziness kind of went away, it was an extra, and I look over, and she's still there. And I go, you still here? Well, what? I, I kind of still, I kind of really love you. And it kind of took a whole second sort of renaissance of our relationship. And, and here we are. You know, she's here tonight, which I'm excited. You know, and, okay. and when you have your family there, my kids came down to San Diego. It just gives you a little, little extra surge. Are you know your what kids I mean? with you tonight? They're not tonight. No, I'll see you tomorrow in Los Angeles. They came down to San Diego. Okay. Uh, they're hand you would hear them if they were here. Is that right? Oh yeah, no. They, you would know they were here. There would be no denying them. They're they're twins, Lydon and Hartley. So they'd be they may be huh. making a mess. They wouldn't let this happen without them being on the. They're already hams. You know what I mean? And now what about uh, they're like three years old? Three years old. They turn three April 29th. All right. Let's fast forward. Uh -oh. They're 21. Uh oh. They want to go in their father's footsteps. I mean, I'm going to support everything they, they want to do, like my dad. My dad was kind of a traditional guy, a finance guy, but he always said, listen, you get your college degree and I'll support whatever you did. Did you do that? I literally got my degree at USC on a Friday, and wow. Saturday morning, we were in my mom's garage with the Shrink Inks, which the band that became Sugar right, Ray. So right, right. I go, Dad, you said whatever, and my dad paid for this extreme expensive education at USC, and he goes, well, I, I didn't really mean it, but he was supportive. <laughs> he bit his tongue. I go, got my degree, Dad. And he's, you know, he, there was no one more supportive of the band. Yeah. Uh, and I will do that with my kids, too, as well. I mean, they, they want to be ballerinas just be the best ballerina and I'm talking about my son too you know what I mean just be the best you can be at it and everything I can do to help you is great and I'll show him the pitfalls you know I mean everything I've done is well documented so I'm sure gonna have some questions for me to say the least uh, but I, I, I think they'll be cool enough to understand uh, they're just they're really you know I'm very proud of them I love them yeah Google Mark McGrath you're gonna find a lot of uh, information you'll find I know I don't have kids in Germany I know I'm not a transvestite and all that <laughs> stuff but it's fun to talk about <laughs> and the under the sun tour you're actually one of the co-founders of this yeah last year I, we co-founded the sun Summerland tour. I co-founded it with Art uh, from Everclear, okay. and uh, you know, finally did like sort of a nostalgic '90s tour, and it seemed like the time was right. Uh, we tried to do it earlier, but like there was a real hangover of the '90s in the millennium. It was hard to really say when it ended. Uh, so we were waiting for a while. Then Art called me, moved down to LA. We got together, we did the tour, and Art just Art wanted to take it a little different way. He wanted a little more heavy and rocking. Where I, I wanted to like include En Vogue and Naughty by Nature. I want to like I want to branch out. I mean, I think if you had a hit in that era, late '80s, '90s, or early millennium, uh, you're welcome on the tour. So we kind of had a difference in that. There was no 
don't fall out. I mean, there was a difference of business for sure. Uh, but I wish Art the best. And Summerland was up and running this this summer, and he had a great tour. So there's enough room for both of us. There's so okay. many great songs from that era that uh, it, it can sustain its business. And this tour is going to go like till end of August, September, yes. October, November. How late are we going on this? We're going to go to uh, about the end of August, and then we're doing a few one-offs um, okay. where like casinos have called and they said, hey, we'd like to add at our casino. So we're going to do a couple weekends as well wow. and maybe take it to Southeast Asia and then do it again next year. And you were in Indonesia about a month ago. That's correct. What we are were the fans like there? In, incredible. Incredible. Right. They, they truly love music. There's no there's no demarcation of music. We actually played on a bill with Sixpence and the Richer, Suicidal Tendencies, then Sugar Ray. I mean, in that order. Awesome. I mean, imagine following Suicidal Tendencies. I'm like, how is this going to happen? Uh, and the kids loved it. They don't care. They just love music. You know, you could have Boys to Men on the festival with like an old metal band. They, there's no like, there's no irony associated with it. They just, once they love you, they embrace you. And having that kind of fan passion, it's rare. And uh, when the tour's done, how are you going to spend your off time? Um, wow, that's a good question. Uh, with the kids. Yeah, definitely with the kids. You know, I'm a father first and foremost. Yeah. You know, there is really no off time when you, that is what you do. But I'll be hustling the TV thing. Like I know you, you're doing what you want to do too as well. So oh, wait, don't uh, take any of my gigs. You know what I mean? This that, guy's too good. I can no, tell listen, already. It reminds me, uh, you were going to put a, a word into extra. Yeah, I got you, man. I got you. The name's Lisa G. And Lisa, if you're watching, or you will be watching because I'll tell you to watch, this guy is amazing. Come on, he's a Seacrest. Look at him. What are you waiting for? Take him out of Sacramento. Bring him down to Los Angeles. He deserves it. You know, I think we're going to wrap up the interview right there. <laughs> Mark McGrath. Ladies and thank gentlemen, you, brother, thank you, man. Good to see you, man. Pleasure. Right. See you guys.